他批评北约轰炸南联盟，他反对制裁，因为遭受痛苦的是普通民众。他表示，政治家应服务本国利益，而非听从他国指挥。他称赞中国是真正的朋友。塞尔维亚新一届政府成立之际，总理布尔纳比奇接受高端访谈，独家专访，敬请收看。关注国际焦点，洞察世界风云。大家好，欢迎来到本期的高端访谈，我是邹韵。今天我们来到了塞尔维亚首都贝尔格莱德，即将在这里对话塞尔维亚总理阿纳布尔纳比奇。五年前，他成为塞尔维亚的总理，在今年的八月份，他被再次提名获得连任。布尔纳比奇总理坦言，新一届的政府将面临二战以来前所未有的局面，需要应对包括粮食短缺、能源危机、通货膨胀在内的多重挑战。那么他计划如何应对挑战，走出塞尔维亚的发展之路？今天我们一起在对话中寻找答案。This is the cabinet where we have、uh, cabinet meetings. This is the the meeting room、uh, for the、uh, cabinet meetings. These are all the you know the seats of the the ministers. This is、uh, the general secretary of the government. With、This、the young. This is my seat. Right. Oh, This yes, is the、yes. the seat of the the first、uh, deputy prime minister and minister of foreign affairs.、Mm -hmm. This is deputy prime minister and minister of finance.、Mm -hmm. Is the deputy prime minister minister of defense and the rest is ministers across the table. So this is basically where the most important decisions are, <laughs> are made here made. in the country. Yes, and my cabinet is is just upstairs and.、Uh, Well, I thought this would probably. What is it like? It's like lots of fighting and、uh, quarreling. Was like pretty civilized.、Process. No, it's pretty. It's pretty civilized.、Uh, <laughs> you know, most of the most of the quarreling is is done behind the closed doors,、mm -hmm. one on one.、Uh, and so,、okay. basically, the decisions that are、uh, taken here are the decisions that have already been agreed. Prime Minister Bonovic, thank you so much for joining us on the program. Well, first of all, congratulations on being appointed as Serbian Prime Minister for another term. I know、thank、recently you. you're very busy with the formation of the new government, and it seems that the situation actually this time is pretty tough because he said in different occasions that the new government is going to face circumstances unseen since the World War II, or is going to face much more demanding challenges than the cabinet did two years ago. So, what is the government plan? To tackle those challenges, and what are the most important principles at play? Thank you very much. It's an honor uh, to uh, to be a guest、uh, on your show.、Uh, yes, we have just formed、uh, the new government. This is my third term as the Prime Minister of the Republic of Serbia,、um, and and first and foremost, I really have to、uh, thank everyone who's watching us. In China, for the support and partnership between China and Serbia that we like to call steel friendship and partnership between China and Serbia, and so in my third term, I am very much looking forward to continue strengthening that partnership and friendship between China and Serbia, both political and economic. As for the challenges,、uh, especially as country. In the European continent, we feel a lot of consequences of the war in Ukraine, and absolute priority going forward、uh, for for this government is to change our energy policy. So, more sustainability, more in energy independence, uh, uh, diversification of energy sources as well, more. Renewable energy sources. President Vučić has said, "What is going on in Ukraine now leaves Serbia stuck between a rock and a hard place." So now, is the situation getting better for Serbia? Or is it going to get worse before it gets better? Unfortunately, I expect that it's going to get worse before it gets better. Why?、Uh, because、uh, what has been, what has happened、uh, in Serbia or you know former Yugoslavia? Back in 1999, and then again repeated in the the、uh, early 2000s or the first decade of of, of 2000s. So it is very difficult uh, uh, to for some、uh, Western countries to accuse anyone for aggression when in 1999 they bombed they bombed Serbia. 
without any consultations or the decision made by the Security Council and the UN. Um, and so it was clear act of aggression. Burnati,总理所说的,是一九九九年,正经世界的北约空战,南联盟世界。一九九九年三月起,以美国为首的北约在没有联合国安理会授权的情况下,对南斯拉夫联盟共和国进行了长达七十八天的空袭。包括学校
key focus, my key area, and then my key contribution uh, to Serbia. We have seen a fantastic growth. I'll tell you, 10 years ago, the annual export of our IT sector was 375 million euros. Mm -hmm. This year, it will be over 2.6 billion euros. Wow, so that's impressive. It, it, it was an impressive growth. And, and the next thing for us going forward in the, in, the, in the term of this government is going to be greater utilization of artificial intelligence and, 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 uh, and us being uh, uh, seen as one of the centers of excellence in biotechnology, bioengineering here, here in this part of, of Europe. And, and again, in, in that respect as well, uh, I will be looking for uh, closer collaboration uh, with China. In terms of the changes that I brought, certainly digitization, and also the um, uh, introduction of e-government. Can you give us an example of that? Absolutely. Be before introduction of e-government, uh, when there was a newborn in Serbia, parents needed to spend at least three to four days going around different institutions to register a child to get this their healthcare records to, to, for, to apply for the citizenship, all of, all of these things, apply for uh, uh, child allowance and, and things like that, literally three days. And now how does it take? Ten minutes in the, in, the, in the hospital. So what they need to have is their ID cards, uh, they need to decide on the day for the child, and all the other uh, information about their family, social status, all of that, we basically get on one click. Mm -hmm. We just draw from all of our databases, and when the baby gets home, everything is already awaiting. No more piles of papers No more anymore. papers whatsoever. Mm -hmm. You mentioned about President Alexander Vucic, and he has always spoken highly of you, and he said he had, quote unquote here, limitless trust in you. Well, Prime Minister, I don't know whether you know that actually President Vucic is very, very popular on Chinese social media network. I know that. <laughs> you know that. Very, we are very happy and very proud. Right. Mm -hmm. And many Chinese netizens, they're wondering, how does it feel to be working with him? I have to say that, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's an honor. It's also a great pleasure uh, and privilege to be working uh, side by side with President Vucic. He, he is a true leader. He's, he is a true leader. He uh, is um, literally working around the clock every day uh, to, to make sure that uh, we implement all of these projects that, that we um, have uh, uh, identified as projects which will change Serbia. Is there any helpful advice that he has ever given you, especially when you first got started as a prime minister? To focus on important things, to uh, set out priorities, and then and then run for those, uh, rather than trying to fix everything. But the priority that you set uh, as the vision of how to really change the country is is something that uh, sh we should be 100% dedicated to. And this has become now one of your guidelines when you help to govern the country. Absolutely, that is one. And the, uh, and the other one is, uh, and, and that I, I think is especially difficult uh, for a country um, that is placed in the European continent that is not a large country, you know, in terms of population. We are a little bit less than seven million people mm -hmm. to protect Serbia and to think of uh, Serbia's key interests in mind. We, in the past had uh, uh, some politicians and, and governments that would basically be almost listening to other countries, uh, you know, what they would like to see from Serbia and doing that. It was just easier for a small country to be governed in that way. Right. Uh, that has changed since uh, Aleksandar Vucic became prime minister and now uh, obviously being the president, and, and that was his advice to me. We need to take care of Serbia's interests and interests of our, of our people first and foremost. Mm -hmm. Well, speaking of the foreign policies, in your very recent speech to the parliament, you emphasize the strengthening of partnership with all partners, both East and West. Uh, actually, for years, Serbia has been maintaining close relations with China, Russia, as well as Europe, while maintaining dialogue with NATO. So what are the thoughts of positioning the country's foreign policy with such a balanced manner and why? Why the stress of all partnership is particularly important now? Well, I'll tell you. 
Uh, firstly, uh, we do want to become uh, part of the European Union. Our strategic focus in terms of foreign policy is to become a part of the, of the European family of nations. We think that's in the best interest of Serbia. At this point in time, 65% of foreign investors in Serbia come from the EU. Uh, our, that is our uh, leading export market. 70% of our exports uh, go to the EU. Uh, and uh, geographically, culturally, you know, we are part of, of Europe. However, we are militarily neutral. You know, for one, one apparent reason is obviously the bombing of uh, former uh, Yugoslavia, which is, at that time was Serbia and Montenegro, mm -hmm. back in 1999. And so, you know, military neutrality is something that our people, our country is deeply, deeply dedicated to. But your close relations with China and Russia is put you sometimes in a stressful position. Was that a tough call for your government? It is, and it has been. Uh, but on the other hand, I, I have to say that, you know, there is, uh, to be perfectly honest, a little bit of a hypocrisy there mm -hmm. as well. Because, I mean, if you look at all the Chinese investments in Europe, uh, you know, 90% of those investments is in Western Europe in the EU member countries. And our partners in the EU have facilitated fa uh, Chinese investments for their growth. Uh, now that we want to strengthen those partnerships, sometimes it has been said to us that it's not the best way forward. But again, you know, Serbia, it's in the best interest of Serbia to cherish that friendship and partnership. And, and China has proven and also under very difficult circumstances and in the crisis situation to be a true friend. And we value that and we will never forget that. So yes, it's not, in terms of foreign policy, the easiest position to be in. It's not the most comfortable position, but it is the position which is in the best interest of our country and our people. You mentioned a little bit earlier about one of the major responsibilities for the new government is about achieving EU membership and this of course is uh, one of the strategic goals of Serbia and the um, accession negotiations started in 2014 and have um, you know go through many ups and downs and in the very recent report by the European Commission on Serbia has made it very clear that the country needs to do more to align itself with the bloc most notably by joining EU to impose sanctions on Russia well, Prime Minister Brnovic, we all know this kind of pressure will likely continue and even escalate. So what is the government's plan to deal with that? Well, for example, today we have uh, President of the European Commission, uh, Ursula von der Leyen, uh, visiting uh, Serbia. And then uh, later this afternoon, I, I, will, I will have a meeting with her. And certainly, you know, that is going to be one of the topics. It always is. Mm -hmm. We don't think that policy on sanctions is the best policy. Uh, we do not think that that kind of a policy will benefit people in Russia or in Ukraine. Uh, and, uh, and, and we have been subject to international sanctions back in the 90s, and we know how much ordinary citizens suffer because of sanctions. Also, Russian Federation, much like People's Republic of China, is one of those important countries that respects our territorial integrity, territorial integrity of Serbia, and has never recognized the um, uh, uh, unilateral pro proclamation of independence of the so-called Kosovo. So Russia, as a member of the Security Council of the, of the United Nations, much like our Chinese friends, are those that are in the Security Council fighting for the respect of our territorial integrity as internationally recognized country. So in that respect, again, it is very, very difficult to just forget about that. Hangyo是时间的果实,这句塞尔维亚俗语是中塞友谊的真实写照。二零一六年,习近平主席访问塞尔维亚后,双边贸易额增长了三倍。塞尔维亚经济增速连年在欧洲国家中位居前茅。
二零二零年新冠疫情期间，塞尔维亚总统武契奇欢迎中国援塞医疗专家组时，对五星红旗献上深情一吻，续写了中塞友谊的佳话。对布尔纳比奇总理来说，二零一九年率团参加第二届进博会是他难忘的中国记忆。让我们热烈欢迎塞尔维亚总理布尔纳比奇阁下致辞。今年三月，他来到贝尔格莱德中国文化中心出席塞尔维亚中资企业商会成立大会。Kada otvaramo komoru kineske kompanije u Republici Srbiji, time praktično kineske kompanije govore da veruju u Republiku Srbiju, da veruju u političku, ekonomsku stabilnost Republike Srbije. Well, Prime Minister Brunovic, let's talk a little bit about bilateral relations with China. And this relationship between China and Serbia is always depicted as ironclad. And this trust and friendship has also propelled the economic and trade development between the two countries. In 2021, China is Serbia's second largest foreign trade partner. And in the past decade, Serbia's export to China has increased 152 times. Not, one, not 152 percent, is it? 152 times. It's unbelievable. It is unbelievable indeed. And I know you said that now the sky is the limit for Serbian economy, given that both countries are pushing for relevant procedures concerning the free trade agreement. So what is your outlook on this front? And also, what are some of the areas of cooperation do you see the biggest potential for growth? We want to be able to sign uh, FTA with China as soon as possible. Most countries, when they criticize China, uh, they criticize it for being uh, uh, closed, um, you know, for uh, protectionist policy, uh, for trying to export and being close to, to uh, allow investors and goods and services into China. And I think that is 100% not true. Uh, and again, President Xi Jinping has actually initiated this export uh, fair. I had a big uh, uh, privilege to uh, lead the Serbian delegation in, in one of those in Shanghai. It's, fu it's fantastic. And again, I mean, you know, our companies love to go there. Uh, they, they have fantastic partnerships. And again, you know, only in this past couple of years, our export to People's Republic of China reached 1 billion euros. Now, China is a vast country and that important or big or impressive for you and uh, for our viewers. But for Serbia, it's a huge number. 1 billion euro export is extremely important. It is and impressive to us as well. <laughs> and that is without the foreign trade agreement. So once we have FTA, that's, I said, you know, the, the sky is the limit, and that is one of my key priorities. Mm -hmm. And you've met with Chinese President Xi Jinping a couple of times before, and as you said, in 2019, when you were in China for the second China International Import Expo, President Xi met with you and exchanged ideas about bilateral cooperation. So what is your impression of President Xi, and have there been any memorable moments during your meetings with him? Well, I have, I have, to, I have to admit, I was very nervous to, to meet with the... Uh, Again, the leader, the world leader, one of the most important uh, world leaders is, uh, is um, you know, it's always a privilege. Uh, and uh, I know how much also President Alexander Vucic appreciates him. Uh, I know uh, that, uh, I know how many times President Vucic told me when meeting uh, uh, President Xi Jinping to always thank for for all of the support that uh, he uh, and, and, and China provided to Serbia in very difficult times. So, you know, it was kind of, uh, I, you know, to be very honest, nerve-wracking. But I was, you know, it was a fantastic meeting and I remember, you know, I, I know President Xi Jinping is a very thoughtful, very, very calm person, you know. it's. Uh, 
he made it easier on me as the prime minister of a much smaller country than the People's Republic of, of China. You know, it was, um, it was a fantastic meeting. He was here in 2016, uh, and we are very much looking forward to hosting him again. This bilateral war, still friendship as many would describe, has become even more strengthened during the fight against COVID-19 pandemic. And he said that before, the support of China saved jobs, and today the support of China saves lives. So under this context, and also the numerous challenges we're facing, how do you see, or what is your take on the uh, vision initiated by President Xi Jinping about building a community of shared future for mankind? The same uh, as his President Xi Jinping's vision on uh, Belt and Road Initiative. Uh, you know, it's, it's exactly, you know, in those lines. That same vision of multilateralism, mm -hmm. of uh, the world working together to, to help each other out, to save humanity from some of the catastrophes that, you know, we can all face. You know, I was 100% sure that, you know, the lesson that we were to take away all of us across the world from pandemic was go back to multilateralism, to working together, sharing knowledge, sharing experiences, you know, to, to, to work together for the better futures. Unfortunately, I think the world actually uh, went even more away from multilateralism and collaboration after COVID pandemic and created even deeper divisions, which I think uh, really are endangering our whole humankind, you know, mankind, you know, it's, so I'm hoping that at the end of the day, the reason will prevail and that, you know, the, the vision of collaboration and openness will prevail. Well, let's talk a little bit about uh, a major political event in China, the 20th National Congress for CPC, which plays a key role in mapping out the development for the party and for the country in the upcoming years. So what do you think is the significance of this event? I think not just we here in Serbia, but certainly the whole world has watched uh, very closely and, and, and carefully uh, what's happening and what are the decisions. I would like to congratulate the Communist Party of China on a very successful Congress and, and, and also to President Xi Jinping on his third term, uh, which I honestly think is something that is good news for the entire world. What was interesting to me is uh, that, uh, you know, there are a lot of um, priorities that were set by President Xi Jinping that are priorities, for example, for Serbia and Serbian government, mm -hmm. such as digitization, new technologies, uh, healthcare and medicine, biotechnology, education is one of the key pillars for sustainable growth and development. These are exactly the, the priorities that, that I have as the Prime Minister for the government of Serbia. And so we will continue to look closely uh, at uh, developments in, in China and try to replicate some of the things. And we will look for partnerships uh, uh, which will, you know, help us uh, grow e even faster our economy here in Serbia and may make our uh, society even more prosperous. Prime Minister Brnovic, thank you so much for your time and for sharing with us your very insightful views with our Chinese viewers here. Thank you very much. 这里是当地著名的历史性地标卡莱梅格丹城堡。二零一六年，习近平主席对塞尔维亚进行国事访问时，就曾来到这里，俯望萨瓦河和多瑙河时感叹，仿佛看到了塞尔维亚民族生生不息的历史长河。如今，两国领导人不约而同地在多个场合表示，中塞是铁杆朋友，双边关系在历经了风云变幻的挑战后更为坚固。我们也期待看到两国继续将传统友谊转化为务实合作成果，谱写历史长河新的美好篇章。感谢您收看本期的高端访谈，我是邹韵，我们下期再会。